You might be this. Why waste hours animating separate clips and stitching them together later? When you can capture every angle in a single shot. What's up 3D artists? Welcome back to another product animation tutorial. Today, we're making a buttery smooth animation without switching files, without overcomplicating things, and without losing our minds. Okay, let's kick things off by adding our first camera. I will name it Anim1 so things stay nice and organized. Now, I'll move this camera into a nice default position and scale it down so it fits our scene better. For this project, I'm keeping the frame rate at 30 FPS. That way the animation looks smooth, but not hyper smooth like 60 FPS. Basically, it's the sweet spot between quality and render time. For the focal length, I'm setting it to 130 millimeters. This works really well for product shots and animations because it gives that clean, compressed look, almost like a professional product photo shoot lens. Okay, now let's jump to frame 60 and set a keyframe for the final camera position. Think of this as the landing spot where our camera will settle at the end of the move. Now, let's head back to frame 1. I'll move the camera along the y-axis to set up its starting position and then drop in a keyframe there as well. Okay, camera rotation time, but we're not spinning the camera like a Beyblade, grinning face with sweat. Instead, we'll use an empty as the boss. Add an empty, park it in the center, then select your camera, select the empty, and set it to keep transform. Now the empty is basically your camera's steering wheel. Rotate the empty, and the camera follows like a loyal puppy. Now let's animate the empties rotation. First, jump to frame 60, where our camera animation ends. Rotate the empty to the final angle you want and set a keyframe there. Then, go back to frame one, rotate the empty to your starting angle and set another keyframe. Boom, now the camera not only moves forward, but also rotates smoothly around the product. Right now, our animation ends at frame 60, but I want a little slower and smoother, so I'm extending the timeline to 90 frames. To do that, I'll just grab the keyframes at 60 and move them over to frame 90. This stretches out the animation. Same motion, but with more breathing room. Okay, now let's add another camera or duplicate the same one, but by duplicating the camera also got the empty as a parent. So select take camera and left click on it, go to parent and choose clear and keep transformed. It will ensure the camera didn't move somewhere after removing the parent. All right, now let's reset the camera's rotation. Then press alt plus R that instantly resets the camera's rotation back to default. Now I'll make a duplicate of this camera. That way, I don't have to redo all the setup again and again. I can just reuse this copy whenever I need another shot. Now, we don't want to keep moving every new empty back to the center of the camera manually. That's just extra work. Instead, here's a shortcut. Select the first empty object, then press Shift plus S and cursor to select it. This snaps the 3D cursor right to the center of the empty. Now, whenever we add another empty, it'll automatically spawn in the exact same spot. No need to reposition every time. Now let's position and rotate the second camera so it frames the model nicely. Quick note, if you press zero, Blender will still show the view from the first camera. To switch, just select the new camera, right click and choose set active camera. Now pressing zero will show the second camera's view. Now I'll add another empty, parent the camera to it again and animate the rotation just like we did before.
I'll head to the frame where the second animation ends. Set the final rotation keyframe. Then go back to frame 90 and add the starting keyframe. I'll fast forward this part, since you already know the steps. Now let's switch between cameras in the animation. Move to the frame where you want the second camera shot to begin. First, select the second camera. Then, hover your mouse over the timeline and press Ctrl plus B. Blender will add a camera marker at that frame, which tells it. Okay, from here, use this camera. But first we also have to do same with the first camera in the first frame. And now you can clearly see the transition. The view switches smoothly from camera 1 to camera 2 at the marked frame. But first, let me give you the non-negotiables you need to remember while making these animations. Always add an empty. Parent the camera to that empty. Animate using the zero rotation of the empty. First, set your final end keyframe. Then, go back and set the starting keyframe. And don't forget, use Ctrl plus B to switch cameras in the timeline. Since I've already shown you how to use an empty for rotation and how to switch between two cameras smoothly, I'll speed up the process and quickly set up the last two animations. The rest is your turn. Try making those on your own. All right, now that we got the basics down, let's switch to the graph editor. This is where we can refine the motion, smooth out the rotation, and make the camera movement feel less robotic and more cinematic. Since we're gonna make a speed ramp effect, we have to make sure the animation starts fast slows down in the middle and then speeds up again at the end. That way, when we switch cameras in between, the cut feels way smoother and not choppy. As you can see in the graph, we're basically making the same type of curve at both the starting and the ending of the animation. Why? Because they both behave the same way, speeding up at the start and speeding up again at the end. The middle part stays smoother and slower, so that transition feels cinematic. Now, let me crank up the graph handles a little more. The steeper the curve at the start and end, the smoother and punchier the motion feels. Think of it like tightening a rubber band. The more you stretch it, the more snap and flow you get in the movement. Now that we're done with the rotating animation graph, it's time to do the same for the camera's movement along the y-axis. Here's a little pro tip. You want the exact same speed ramp effect for this movement too. So instead of guessing, just select both the camera and the empty. This way, you can use the empty's curve as a reference and shape the camera's Y movement curve to match it perfectly. That way both rotation and movement sync up and feel buttery smooth together.
Since we already created the perfect easing for our first animation, we don't need to reinvent the wheel for the second one. Here's the trick. Just select the empty object of the second animation together with the empty from the first animation. Now you'll have both curves visible in the graph editor, and you can use the first one as a reference. This way the timing and easing stay consistent across animations, giving you that smooth, professional flow. Now that you know the trick for keeping easing consistent, I'll speed things up and quickly build the rest of the two animations off screen. No need to bore you with repetition. Once those are set, we'll jump straight into render settings and see how to crank out animations faster without melting your PC. All right, let's make our renders fly. First, switch your device from CPU to GPU compute. That alone can be night and day faster. Next, drop the noise threshold down to 0.1. Then set render samples to around 64 or even 50. Trust me, it still looks clean with denoising. Scroll down, open the denoise tab, and make sure it's using the GPU. Then go into light paths, set max bounces from 12 down to 5 to 8. Less bounces, less headache for your PC. Now, under Film, change the pixel filter width from 1.5 to 1. Crisp edges, less blur. Scroll again, under Performance Memory. Enable tiling and set the tile size to 248. Then under Final Render, enable Persistent Data so Blender doesn't keep reloading everything for each frame. Finally, in Output Properties, set your format to JPEG, 100% quality, and bump the resolution from 1080 to 2160 for that crispy 2K output. And that's a wrap for today's tutorial. If this helped you save some render time and some sanity, don't forget to drop a like, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one with more Blender Hacks. Until then, happy rendering.